What's up everyone? My name is Melissa McCack and this is Teach the Teach, where I teach you how to teach a board game. And in this video, I'll be covering Twilight Struggle. So this is a how to teach video. I am assuming that you already know how to play this game and now you're looking to teach this to other players. So this is a way that has worked for me. There are plenty of ways to teach games. So if you've had any difficulty teaching games, hopefully this could help you out. Now with Twilight Struggle, there's a lot going on in the game and I usually start off with what I always start off with the story of the game, what's going on behind this, right? We are reenacting the Cold War. Then I go into how to win the game. Now for Twilight Struggle, by the way, I'm using second edition. So some of this stuff might be a little bit different from, uh, let's say first edition in terms of component quality, but this is what I've got. So this is what I'm showing you. Anyway, for scoring, the there's like three different ways that you can win the game. So I I state that and then I say one of the ways is a tug of war of points. And I describe that. I say that we are in this tug of war of points where if I'm gaining points, that means you are losing points, right? And whoever gains uh, 20 victory points uh, immediately wins the game. I also say another way you could uh, win this game is by right here. So with the DEFCON, right? I point their attention to the DEFCON status and I say that if this starting at five ever reaches all the way over here on your turn, a nuclear war happens and you automatically lose the game right then and there. Then the last thing I say is if neither of those things happen by the end of uh, turn 10, then we're going to count up all the victory points at the end and see whoever has the most wins the game. This way they now know uh, how all the ways they could win the game and uh, how the game ends. So that's cool. So now they have their foundation of how this game sort of uh, works. From there, I go into card play because this whole game is really revolved around cards, the cards of the game. So I start off with, I take out well, I set aside three cards to begin with, and I'm going to assume that uh, your opponent, the person who's new to the game, is playing the U.S. player. They could play USSR, that's fine, but I'm just going to pretend as though they're playing the U.S. player. So I'll say one of the cards you might come across is something that looks like this, right? And this is kind of like your card, uh, and I'll point their attention to the top, uh, what is this, left-hand corner of the star, right? Saying that because this star is white, you have a choice. You can either use that value in the middle as operational points, and you can let them know that you'll explain what you could do with that later, or you could use the event at the bottom, right? And this event is going to be beneficial to you because this is your US card. So you have a choice. You can either do the event when you play it, or you can use the operational points, which will give you some other sort of actions. Then I let them know about these cards, the red cards, right? And I point their attention to these red stars in the top left corner saying that this is for USSR. So now you can use the operational points to do some sort of actions, but then I, me being the USSR player, will get this uh, event and I'll get to control what happens with that event. Cool. Then I let them know that you might also come across this other card, which has a star that has both white and red. So this is to the benefit of both USSR and USA. And I say that uh, so now, again, you have a choice. You can use the event or the operational points. But if you use the operational points to do these other sort of actions, I'm going to, as a USSR player, I'm going to get to use this event and I get to control that event. Or you could go ahead and do the event and all is well in love and war. <laughs> anyway, um, and then lastly, I say, okay, what will happen is we're going to start off with eight cards and by the end of an entire turn um, you're going to have one card left over 
However, there's this fourth card that you might come across and they are called scoring cards. They look like this. They're going to tell you uh, in where it's going to score and you can let them know that you're going to explain how scoring works a little bit later. But you'll notice at the bottom here may not be held which means that last card in your hand, it cannot be this. You have to play this before the entire turn is over. And at this point, you might wanna let them know that uh, things are a little backwards in the way uh, things are labeled, right? Because a whole turn is kind of what usually we would call a round and vice versa, a round is one little turn really, uh, just so they understand what you're talking about. Uh, and from there, they know then a lot of how the cards play. You might also want to let them know about how, just like the may not be held, you might see another asterisk here with the uh, remove from play if event is used. That means if you use the event, this card is removed out of the game permanently. From there now, they know a good chunk of the game just because a lot of it is based around these cards. It's all about these card play, and this is pretty much the uh, easiest portion to teach them, I think. From there, it gets a little more difficult because a lot of things start to intertwine. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to direct your attention to the board because I think it'll be a little bit easier to show you how I would uh, teach this game. So let's bring it down to the table. At this point, I point their attention over to the player aid because this player aid is actually very, very good. It tells you uh, all the different actions you could take with your operational points. Uh, and it even tells you like why you would take it, uh, why you would take that action with the purpose. And then it tells you like what conditions need to be met on the board in order for you to take that action, what the cost is of the action. Uh, and then it even tells you the procedure, how the action works. So. A lot of questions might arise, but they could really just reference this player aid as the game goes on. And I usually start off with describing first the placing influence markers action because I think this one's the easiest to go over first. And before I do that, I point their attention to uh, the map and saying that a lot of what you'll be doing is trying to gain influence over different countries, different continents and all that. But how do, how do you actually control a country? I'll point to any sort of place on the map and let's just say Africa, South Africa here. Um, and I say, I point their attention to the little red uh, number here in the corner, okay? Or if it's yellow, whatever it might be, right? So the little number up here in the corner, it says, I need three influence in order to control this country. So let's say I only have one influence here and us actually starts off with one influence here anyway so when you have the board set up uh this will be an easy sort of place to start off with so you have one influence in south africa that means that you have one influence but you don't quite control the country yet but if at some point and by the way this is when your chit it would be in white it would be the white side of the chit because that's just saying you have influence here but if you ever gain the three influence, if you have three influence in South Africa, the chit will not be blue, connoting that you now have control over South Africa because you've now met the influence requirement. Sweet. So now that they know that, you could go into the action of placing influence markers. And you could even go into it right there saying like, you know, you want to increase your influence in countries, your restrictions uh, that the markers must be placed adjacent to or in the same space with friendly influence markers, all that. It tells you right on the player aid, which is really cool. So now let's say they played some sort of card, right? And you could go th through this with them. You could just go back to the card that you already uh, had out. So they play and then they have two operational points. That means they could have, they could uh, put in two different influence markers, right? Or the same, they could put uh, just a two here, cool. Uh, and you just let them know that you can place your influence marker into um, any country that you already have influence in or that is adjacent to a country that you have influence in and you could place up to two influence markers. Right. So, I'll, for example, let's say they have South Africa and now they want to they could put all two into uh, Botswana because it's adjacent and now they would actually have control here. Right. Or if they wanted, they could just place one here. Right. It's all about sh sort of uh, showing them a couple of examples, but not too much because you you're trying to get people playing as quickly as possible. That's what I'm always trying to do. So that's the placing influence markers. 
from there, you want to describe, I think, coups because coups aren't too difficult either. This is where, so you'll explain the coup and how that works uh, very similarly to how you place influence markers. You're just um, explaining, you're, you could really just go along with the player aid, say like, this is the reason why you'd want to do it. Uh, this is what has to be there. So I have to have influence in that place in order for you to perform a coup. Uh, and then you could just use any sort of card and again, letting them know that, let's say if you played this card, I would still get this event, even though you're performing the coup. And then you want to go over into uh, realignment roles. And you could even let them know that this is probably the uh, most difficult part to um, explain and really wrap your head around, but it tells you everything you need to know right there. So if you ever get confused or you don't remember, you can always reference this sheet. You can let them know that. Now, when explaining a coup, this is when you're also going to want to uh, point their attention to the DEFCON status and the military operations. And this could be a little bit tricky, right? So you want to say that when you do a coup, this is going to go down a level, and then this is going to come off the board saying uh, where coups can no longer be attempted or realignment attempts uh, in some of these places. So the first one is Europe. So this would go by Europe. And now you can't uh, perform any coups there until this goes back up or by the end of the round or whatever. So from there, you can also explain the military operations, saying that you'll go up a certain amount of spaces, depending on the cards and whatever. And again, this is all stated on the player aid, which is awesome. And this is where you want to say, okay, at the end of the round, you're going to gain, you might gain victory points based on these military operations. And this could be a little bit tricky for folks. So you might want to say something along the lines of, if the DEFCON status is, let's say, at four right now, that means that's how many uh, military uh, operations that you need in order to meet this requirement of four, right? So you want your military op operations to be at least at four. So let's say if I'm the USSR player and I'm at four, right? That's I've met the requirement. You're still at zero. That means at the end of the turn, if you're still at zero and I'm at four, I've met the requirement. We're going to do four minus zero. I would get four victory points. Let's say you were at one. We're going to do four minus one. I would get three victory points, right? And you could denote that. This is all because you haven't met the required goal. And then you could just say if you've also made it to four or even five or whatever it might be, none of us would get victory points because we've both meet, met the requirement of the DEFCON status. Awesome. And at this point, you could really start to play. And I know we haven't gone over everything just yet. Like we haven't done the space race yet. I haven't even quite said about uh, controlling Europe, how that is an automatic victory as well. But I think that because there is so much going on in the game, you don't want to bombard them with so much information in the beginning. And it would take you like an hour to explain this game before you even get started. And they'd forget a lot of the things anyway, or they'd have a lot of questions, uh, which is also important, by the way, especially in this game, as questions come up, just, you know, you could answer it and let them know that it's okay to not do so well your first game and you most likely won't because you don't know quite everything that's going on and you don't know all of the cards unless they have some sort of Cold War knowledge, which could actually bring some sort of benefit to this game, I would imagine, uh, just because this game is so thematic. But either way, you could go ahead and you could direct them to sequence of play. Let me see if I could turn this around here. There we go. So sequence of play, and you can just say, okay, normally we would increase the DEFCON status by one step, but we're going to skip that because we're at five already. Uh, then you go ahead and you deal out the eight cards, and then you say, all right, we're going to do the headline phase. And you just let them know, so we're gonna, you're going to pick one card uh, from your hand, and it can be anything, and we're just going to do the event on the card. We're going to ignore the OP. That is going to determine our initiative order. So whoever has the highest will go first, yada, yada, right? And you're going to just say that the event is going to go off uh, without a choice, right? Like they have to go off. 
So you do the headline phase, cool. Then you could get right into the action round of uh, the game and just saying, all right, this is where you get to uh, take one of these sort of actions using your OP, or if you want to use the event on the card, this is all what we were talking about in the beginning of uh, my explanation, right? So now you're going one by one, you're playing cards. I would say after a couple of cards have been dealt out, this is when you could direct their attention towards the space race. And you say, all right, you might have some cards in your hand that you don't really want. Let me just adjust that a little bit. Um, so such as, so you might have some red cards that you really want to get rid of. This is where you can actually use them on the space race without giving me the benefit. And you just explain to them how the space race works. And you could just say uh, something along the lines of, you'll throw out a card, uh, you'll use the operation operational points value uh, because some of them they need, right? So for example, for over here, you need uh, two operation points um, in order to uh, move your dude along the track. And it says roll a one to three. So you're going to roll your die. And if you get a one through three value, value, you get to move this up along the track. Whoever gets here first gets uh, these amount of points. Whoever gets here second gets the right hand side points. And then you can even let them know uh, at some point you might even get a special benefit. So whoever gets there first gets that benefit. Whoever gets that their second cancels the benefit for the first person and so on and so forth. Then you might want to wait like maybe one more turn and you say, okay, there's actually one other way that you could win this game and you could direct their attention to Europe up here. And it says it right there. If you control Europe, you win. And this is when you want to uh, direct their attention to controlling countries and the scoring summony, summary right here because they're going to come across some scoring cards and this is where you could kind of explain what it means to uh, have presence in the uh, in the country, I mean in the continent, uh, what it means to dominate, what it means to control, okay? Um, and then after that, they pretty much know a huge bulk of the game. Now, certain questions might come up. Uh, hopefully, you know the game well enough. You want to also let them know as you're... Um, explaining the scoring summary controlling countries and whatever you want to explain what a battleground country is so anything in this purple banner is a battleground country everything else is not if you're feeling nice you might want to state a little bit of strategy not that you're uh hand holding them or telling them what to do but for example, like, you know, a card comes out that U.S. pretty much gains control over Japan. You might want to let them know because if they start like really putting all their eggs into Japan, you, they're kind of uh, giving themselves even more of a disadvantage that they're already at just by playing it for the first time against you. Uh, so you might want to say a couple of things like that, like, hey, in early war, you know, this thing happens, whatever it might be. Even I don't quite know, remember everything that happens in the game so I might forget and I might not let them know but it's no real advantage to me because I don't really remember all that much either but anyway I think that's a lot of what they need to know so let's uh come on back to my face so that's Twilight Struggle and hopefully that was helpful for some people I know that this game is a little bit of a bear to teach so I'm hoping uh, that could help out a little bit. There is quite a bit of explanation that you have to do before you can really get started, but I'm hoping this could streamline the process a little bit and make it a little bit quicker to uh, explain things to them and get them playing a little bit quicker and hopefully uh, in a way that they could really wrap their head around what's going on in this game. Yes, they might not quite understand the strategy when they first begin and they might not quite know what all the cards are and they might get a little bit confused with uh, all the options that they have, but honestly that player aid is really really fantastic I think uh, because it really lays it out for you and I think if you take it little by little so don't overload them with all that information it could go pretty well I think Anyway, that's it for uh, this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I would love to know how you teach this game to other players. We could start up a little discussion down in the comments below. If you have any questions, let me know. 
This has been Teach the Teach. I'll catch you next time. Thank you.